The Slip Fence Composite Fencing System is specifically designed for homeowners who want a warm and private wood fence, but with the stability and endurance of an aluminum fence and zero maintenance. When planning your horizontal composite slip fence installation, make sure to map out your fence posts exactly six feet between your posts. Dig an 8-inch diameter post hole, 48 inches deep, and fill the bottom with a few inches of gravel if required for drainage. Colder climates may require a deeper post hole. Insert the square aluminum post into the hole and ensure that the post can be set at least 89 inches from the ground to the top of the post for a 7-foot high fence. Pour concrete into the hole around the post and adjust the post until you have at least 89 inches from the ground to the top of the post before the concrete starts to set. Next, lay one 6-foot composite board flat on the ground for spacing between the posts. Then, do the same to set the next posts in the fence line. While the concrete is still wet, level each post on both X and Y axis. Repeat this same procedure for all posts in your fence project. When the concrete has dried, mark your first post at approximately one and a half inches up from the ground level on the inside of the first post that faces the next post. Place the channel against the inside of the first post as close to center of the post as possible and sitting on top of the pencil mark. Level this channel in the center of the post. Then, fasten the channel to the post with the flathead stainless self-drilling screws provided in the kit with a number three Phillips drive. Once the first channel is fastened to the first post, rest the top grooved rail included in the kit on top of the first channel. And by using a speed square resting against the next post, raise the other end of the rail up to level and mark the second post on the inside with a pencil. And this is the top level mark for the second channel to be fastened to the post. Then fasten the second channel to the second post with the five self-drilling screws provided. You should now have two channels facing each other between two posts that are exactly level with each other. Next, measure the exact distance between posts and subtract one quarter of an inch for the thickness of the channels. And with a metal blade on your miter saw, cut the bottom rail to this length. The bottom rail will then fit into the channels between the posts. Insert the bottom rail that has both a tongue and a groove with the tongue facing up horizontally inside the bottom of the channels. Then. Lift up one side of the bottom rail flush with the bottom of the first channel and screw in only one self-drilling black tech screw through the pre-drilled hole in the channel into the bottom rail. Then, lift the opposite side of the rail to be flush with the bottom of the next channel. Check that the rail is level and screw this side of the rail to the channel. Check that the bottom rail is level. Then, proceed to screw the remaining six black tech screws into the rail through the pre-drilled holes in the bottom of the channels. If you're on a slope and are stepping some sections, you can either use earth dug out from the post hole or shorten up the sections that are on the slope to reduce the gap between the ground and the bottom of the fence. Once all eight screws have fastened the bottom rail to the side channels, slip in the first board with the tongue facing up. Confirm the board is level, and then repeat this process for all sections in your fence project before loading more boards in. After all bottom rails and bottom boards have been assembled and leveled, proceed to slip in another four boards into each section in the project. Then, come back to the first section and slip in the remaining boards in each to complete the 13 board infill. Once 13 boards have been slipped into the panels and the fence looks complete, this is when you would install the grooved cap rail. Same as we did for the bottom rail, measure between posts and trim the cap rail to one quarter inch less than the measurement between the insides of the posts to accommodate for the channel thickness. Slip the cap rail on top of the top board, making sure it fits snug and flush with the tops of the channels and fasten with black tech screws through the pre-drilled holes, same as the bottom rail. Post tops should sit approximately two inches above the top of the top cap rail for a nice clean look. Posts can be easily cut down with a metal blade on your saw where necessary. Then, tap on the self-tightening aluminum post cap with a rubber mallet to all posts. Six-foot slip fence gates can be added anywhere in your slip fence project. What you have now is a warm and private slip fence made from sustainable materials that will last a lifetime and continue to look as nice as the day it was installed for decades.
Slip fans, made to last. Don't build something that ain't worth nothing. 20 years.